I'm Robbie Damon, voice of Prompto, Tuxedo Mask, and Akechi, and I'm here with Anime Impulse. That character was bigger than I ever thought it would be. I had no idea. Are you kidding me? Coming back to it was a little bit surreal because the game's been out for a little bit and we recorded it quite a while ago. So revisiting it was a, a bizarre, especially the way that the story continues. That character's got a lot of great motivations. It's a really fun character to play because they're, mm, they're gaming the system. They're working things out. And they did a bunch of new upgrades where like, I think you can do a confidant with him right now. Everybody knows that, that's no secret. It's really, really exciting to be going back to this character that people love so much. I certainly hope another breakfast food meme spawns from this again. I love delicious pancakes. Oh, am I mistaken? I thought I heard something about delicious pancakes. No matter. Well, see you tomorrow. No! No! You, that's the beauty, beauty of memes. They're organic. You don't know that you're making something meme-worthy. The lamest memes are the ones where somebody's trying to make a meme. Get out of here with that. We don't need that. Internet's smarter than that. So did I know? No, I had no clue. Because you do thousands and thousands and thousands of lines. And you do something innocuous as a line about pancakes, even though it's a giveaway, you think it's gonna stay within the context of the world? You don't know that's gonna take on a life of its own. So no, I had no idea the pancakes line was gonna be so big. And I'm grateful for it. It gives the entertainment that you do a new life and you memes are the way that you give art over to the audience and let them do whatever they want with it. That's a cool thing about memes. Totally. Thank you. Man, I really like Big Chungus for some reason. I feel like that's a quality meme. I like dead bad memes that don't make sense anymore. Like some of the first ones, like some of the first challenges, like the Harlem Shake. <laughs> And like the mime challenge and planking. What a stupid thing planking and T-posing is. Why? Why are you guys, what are you, what are you doing kids? What's the next one? The ostriching? You're just gonna dig a hole in the ground and stick your head in it? I hope that's next. I hope that, I hope this get video gets 10 million views and people start ostriching because of me. Big Chungus, do or die forever. Big Chungus, I want it on my gravestone. We met when we were recording one of the pilot episodes. He came in and did a cameo on the, on the opening shorts. Chatted for a little bit, and obviously he's got all of his handlers and whatever. Giant hands, like a, like alien huge hands. His fingers are like 14 inches long, so he shakes your hand and it just en envelops you. But he's just the super sharp, super with it, real sweet, obviously used to being like on uh, sort of like a press tour. We had to take pictures together, didn't have to. We, I, we got to take pictures together. And they brought me over and they introduced me and they're like, Stan, Stan, really, this is Robbie. He's gonna be playing Spider-Man. And he's like, oh, get off the wall, kid. And come on over here and take some pictures. So we're standing there together and the photographer is like, ah, guys, get together. And he's like, come on, come on. And he's like, ah, get over here. And he gives me like a big bear hug. And I'm like, this is Stanley. So I peed myself just a little bit. He didn't see it though. We chit chatted a little bit more. And then he goes, all right, you did good, kid. Now get out there and keep fighting crime. And then I pooped in my pants. And here we are today. Stan Lee, what? Stan Lee. It is amazing. Three years. Three years since Final Fantasy XV came out. It was my first ever triple A game. It was one of the highlights of my career. It was one of the best working environments. And one of my favorite characters, Prompto's pretty much just skinny blonde me. One of the projects that I love the most. I think it really opened the door for me for other big JRPGs. It walked me into the world of triple A video games and it gave me a fan base that has stuck with me like hardcore the last three years. The fans that I have when the game dropped have only quadrupled since the people are playing it now. That's the thing about video games. People play them maybe three years later and I hear all the time I go to conventions, people are like, I'm just playing my way, I love Prompto. And I'm like, that was three years ago. I feel like it's, I recorded five years ago. It feels like a million years ago. I couldn't be more happy with how that game turned out. It was my favorite. Proud to be a Chocobro for life. Did you see that sign? Chocobos! Chocobos! <laughs> How different would three houses be if it was in Vegas? First of all, no one would ever leave. 
That's what UNLV stands for, is you're never leaving Vegas. They would all stay in school for eight to 12 years and then end up in the hotel and entertainment industry. No, Vegas is a great place. I went there for college, I got a great education, I got my master's degree there, but three houses would definitely be different. That's what you get for waking up in Vegas. You wouldn't be going to high tea. You would be going to like a $6.99 prime rib buffet. There would be, would there be no war, no battle. It would all just be everybody trying to get a table at an ultra lounge. That would be the only battle that you would have to. Vegas isn't for fighters, it's for lovers. You'd max out all your relationships. Ooh, I'm gonna feel like a traitor here. Probably Golden Deer because young high school Robbie was pretty much clawed with probably just as many puka shells and bad necklaces and sort of that sort of thing. Definitely the sort of fun, loosey-goosey, not that moody type. I would have been a Golden Deer all the way. Stay golden. Golden Deer. Oh, it's, I'm gonna give it a two-way tie between Pancake Boy, which, you know, it's a meme, so everybody wants to hear it live. The most is, I just want to ride my chocobo all day. I think that's the one. I think that's the one. That's number one. Lava. Loud, annoying, and very annoying. Me, Max Middleman, and Ray Chase. We were all coming up in the anime scene together and started doing conventions. And I met these guys and they were so funny and I really liked them a lot. And I love all voiceover people, but something with us just clicked. And we found out we were in a bunch of the same stuff together. Final Fantasy, Persona, One Punch Man. I think between the three of us, we had 30 projects we were all together in in one year. And I said, guys, we're all doing these cons. Why don't we do a show? And they both went, oh, and I went, yeah. We decided to make an improv variety show specifically curtailed to like convention goers, all within sort of a classic structure of an audience participation improv show. Since then, it's just taken off. We've done it around the world, literally. We do 15 to 20 shows a year for the past almost four years now. It's become part of my life, and it's so much fun. We've done it for 200 people, and we've done it for 4,000. It's a blast, and it was just sort of this idea where, okay, I've got these performers that I know and I like, and we're friends. We can market ourselves together and do a show that I don't know if anybody else can do. So I think that that's where it all came from. And uh, I love it. It's one of my favorite things. I would say that one of my favorites is uh, my, my Native American friend right here because I'm a quarter and it was one of my first big Japanese Americana pieces. I love him a lot. He is the nameless Indian. We shall never name him. Unless you guys want to come up with some of your own and drop them in the comments. What should he be called? His son? Henry? He's not his name, Henry. It's probably my favorite. That's it's actually a super easy question. I hate that term, actually. I don't know why I just said it. Listen, internet, stop saying actually. It makes you sound like an ass. Actually, huh, it was actually pretty good. Uh, actually, it was issue 44. Uh, actually, that was not dubbed into English. Just kill that word. I want to murder it from the Oxford Dictionary. No more actually. But actually, that's an easy question to answer. Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star, Lost Paradise, the last game was the most vocally demanding thing I ever did. So one of the lowest voices I've ever done, but then you know what he does. And everything is a scream. Everything's a heat, like a call out. He's like, Stone mounting split of split ah, ah, ah. Some crazy thing that I can't remember what they are, so I, I couldn't even say it. And then a yell in high, scary Bruce Lee voice. Uh, I'm very proud of that game. I, I, I feel like personally, objectively, I feel like I did a good job. It was very hard. Very hard. Blood. Blood coming out of my, my pieces. I bleed for you. Thank you for asking what's the most touching moment. Cause a lot of times people ask, what's the weirdest moment? And I'm like, people are pretty cool in general. So the most touching moment, one of my very first cons, I signed an engagement ring box. Someone was doing a Sailor Moon type diamond. So they wanted me to sign the box as tuxedo mask. I thought that was pretty sweet. I remember this family that came in that was also Sailor Moon. 
and they were like a tux, a Sailor Moon and a little chibi baby, and they're like, we fell in love because of anime. Here's the baby that we made. And you just go, oh man, these are real live people. Because when they're on the internet, they're just an egg. They're just an avatar of some anime you've never seen. But then you meet them in real life and you go, oh man, you're cool, I like you. Thank you for liking our stuff, we're friends. I find most of the interactions to be emotionally touching because these are people that took time out of their lives to come and meet you. That's very special. I spend most of my day locked in a box screaming into a little can. And to meet the people who, who I'm affecting is very important to me. And I appreciate that a lot. If it were a horror movie and it was the Lava Boys versus the Lava Monster, first to die, me. Because I am the ethnic one and we all know how it goes. Let's be real about it. Two. Max. I'm sorry, Max. You're just not going to make it. We're going to root for you. Everyone's going to root for you. But in the end, you're not going to make it. Because Ray will have to be our final surviving hero. And this is because he is the most apathetic and probably won't do anything the whole movie. He'll just sit there reading a book and the monster will be murdering everybody, me and Max and all the other people. And then Ray will just be like, hmm, oh, guess the monster's caught. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. He's literally the most apathetic person I know. God, I love him. Ray will make it. He'll be fine. Everything. It's how I make a living. It's how I express myself through art. It's how I make my friends. It's how I support my family. It's how I am allowed to participate in grand and exciting worlds that I didn't create and become a part of them. It's how I make my mark. Voice acting has been incredibly good to me and I do the best I can to be good back to voice acting try to be a good member of the community and support it in whatever ways I can, uh, support fandoms and memes, <laughs> and voice acting uh, has been great. Will I do it forever? Who knows? I've been an actor my whole life, but I don't know if I'll be a voice actor my whole life. But for as long as I'm here, I'll do my very best to entertain you guys. That's all I can say. And that's what being a voice actor means to me. Thank you for watching my interview. You can follow me at Robbie Damon pretty much anywhere. You can go to lawoftheshow.com and if you want to tweet at me, send me your favorite memes. It'll be great. Soothing. Come now. How would that be? Oh my. Quiet. Quiet. Oh my.